All right. In our last video, we uh, built out a lot of the business logic that we're going to use for the invoicing and the customer uh, HTML forms. In this particular video, though, what we're going to do is, in order to prepare the Stripe integration as well as the Plaid integration, um, we're going to uh, take the code that we currently have and then assign it to a DigitalOcean server. And uh, what we're going to do is, is we're going to uh, uh, work with Squarespace, which is our domain provider, and then assign it to that DigitalOcean server uh, and register it in HTTPS. Because if we do Stripe, uh, we need to make sure that we make those calls uh, in HTTPS. Um, why I think that uh, this is the best approach to go with is because to me, working with Visual Studio Code and DigitalOcean allows us uh, to pretty much freeform our entire HTML code uh, for our web application. Uh, so uh, I'll walk you through this. There is a prerequisite that you need to make sure that you have SSH keys uh, locally. You'll be able to find some videos on that um, throughout YouTube. Uh, but um, once we have those authorization keys uh, with DigitalOcean, um, you can access it through Visual Studio Code, and then it's so simple to update your code uh, rather than going through Code Beautify. Um, so we'll do this in video three, and then in video four, we're actually going to do some OAuth. All right, so I'll go ahead and open up a new chat with ChatGPT, and if we go to our Chrome, you can see I've got a couple of projects here within DigitalOcean. So this is just the DigitalOcean home screen. Um, you can see my first project. Over to the left, we can create a new project. And I'm just going to create a new project. And we will call this books.expert. All right. And we'll just say this is for a web application. Create project. And we'll skip this for now, removing resources. So over here to the left, we've got our books.expert. Now, what we need to do is, is we need to uh, spin up a droplet because that's what we're going to use to connect to Visual Studio Code and do a number of different customizations that we need to uh, for um, uh, just for the website itself. Um, I'm going to choose the New York Data Center. And down here at the bottom, uh, we use 24.04. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a regular SSD type here, um, and then I'm going to drop this down to the $18 a month, uh, or two cents an hour um, selection. Uh, I kind of stay away from the four to six dollars a month because what I notice is, is as soon as I start to ramp up uh, the HTML code, uh, I have some issues on the Visual Studio side. So. $18 a month, look, that's pretty cheap. So um, I'm going to go ahead and select that. And uh, we will do a root password here. So I always use the password um, here for now. So that way I already have, I always have that. Um, and then let's go down to the bottom and we'll do one droplet. We're going to give the host name. Uh, books dot, uh, dot expert. I don't know if that's going to take that uh, with the period, but we'll see. Um, and then we'll go ahead and create the droplet on the bottom right. And it is going ahead and deploying the droplet here. Um, we can also start a uh, managed database as well. Um, we can use spaces for maybe you want to store images. Um, for now, though, we're just going to use the droplet. And what we'll do in the droplet is, is we will click on the droplet. And over here to the left is our navigation pane for this particular droplet. Now, uh, here is our IP address at the top. This is going to be important. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And we'll go back to uh, ChatGPT and say, I have gone ahead and created a droplet for my domain on DigitalOcean. And the IP address is this and we'll say uh, I want to go ahead and I already have my SSH key locally and want to set up Visual Studio Code so I can access it uh, by easily connecting to a host. 
on VS Code. All right, and uh, I'll go ahead and enter that in. Walk me through uh, opening up the authorization file to go ahead and add my uh, authorization key. I am using the remote console for the droplet on DigitalOcean. All right. So we'll go ahead and ask ChatGPT that. It is going to come back and give us a number of commands that we need to do. So um, sudo su, that's just uh, making sure that we have super user access. And then nano is the editor uh, that we're going to uh, edit those keys with. Um, and then uh, we'll go ahead and walk through those processes uh, here. So I'm just going to open up my access point, launch my droplet via the browser, and that's going to register the SSH key. And we're now connected to our uh, droplet console here. So let's go to sudo su. All right. And then let's now type in nano and we'll use the squiggly line dot ssh authorized underscore keys all right there's our key now all we need to do is again you'll probably want to search google on how to do this but if i go to my user and we find our keys under ssh there's a public key here i'm going to go ahead and open that we'll open it up with notepad Whoops, I <laughs> don't want to do that, uh, but there's our uh, key here, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this, and I think it's the full key. Let me just ask ChatGPT, make sure. Do I type in this full, is this the full key? I forget. <laughs> Yes, it looks like the full public key. So, all right, I'm going to go back up here, and we're now going to go back to my droplet. And I'm just going to go to the next line here, and we will, uh, I believe we can right-click and do paste in here, which we can. I'm going to go ahead now, and uh, it is, uh, uh, I think, uh, to go ahead and save... It's control S. Yes, rote lines and then control uh, X is to get out of it. Okay, cool. So, I'm just curious. Let's go back into it just to make sure. Yes, there it is there. So, we'll do control X. Control X gets you out of it. Um, and all those commands, ChatGPT knows uh, pretty easily here. So, now that we have the uh, we already have this already created, so we're good there. We've we have that here, so we're okay there. Um, now we're going to do this: sudo systemctl restart ssh. sudo systemctl restart ssh. All right, and it's going to restart, which is good. And we'll set up the VS code for remote ssh. Now. <clears throat> we're going to jump in and go into our Visual Studio here, and on the very top we will connect to host, and we're going to add a new SSH host here, and we're going to put in our command, all right, and we're going to store it to this configuration file. This is the SSH config. You can actually edit this configuration file, but uh, for now I'm just going to click on it. And it has added it here. So I'm just going to click on connect, crossing my fingers. And you want to make sure that you click on Linux because we're using a droplet on DigitalOcean. So we're going to click on Linux. And we will continue. We certainly uh, are okay there. So, wow, it has gone ahead and is downloading the VS Code um, server. So we've connected successfully, which is great. Now we need to... Uh, I was able to connect to my droplet via VS Code. Now I want to install NGX, NGX to make sure we can set up the 
write HTML directories, directories for things like bar slash HTML slash or www.html. So we can start adding files to the server. All right. So we're probably going to go ahead and uh, now do an install Nginx here. So we'll go back to our droplet. And we'll do sudo apt update. All right. And we will do sudo apt install Nginx. Yes, we want to continue. It's going to add some some uh, space to our server. All right. That looks like it should be okay. And we'll do sudo systemctl start nginx. And we'll do sudo systemctl enable nginx. Great. Went ahead and enabled it. Um, let's just not do a firewall for now. We'll do it later. Let's check the status now. sudo system ctl status index. And let's go ahead and copy this. You know what? I think it's fine. Let's now go ahead and make our directories here. Um, let's see. I think Injix already has this. Doesn't Injix already have these directories? Installed when we install Nginx. So we don't need to set up the directories, which is great. Alright, so I think we're okay here. Um, let's go to our connected folders and let's go ahead now and put in our var slash www.html. Let's see if we can connect to that folder. All right. Linux. Yes, I trust. Great. Um, now, uh, I want to go ahead and just throw down a uh, very simple um, books.expert uh, landing page here. Um, I may have it under, gosh, uh, I may have it under, uh, there it is, Wisp landing page, so I'm going to grab this, <laughs> and this is from another website, I'm just curious what it looks like here. Oh, perfect. All right, here's my cool... Oh, that's awesome. I love it. Um, oh, that's so cool. All right, so I'm going to grab that, and I'm going to say... I want to take this whisk landing page, turn it into books.expert landing page. By the way, this is how our current app looks in terms of styling so you know it's very DOS based prompt in how it feels new morphic design and glass morphic look look I love the features of this of how this landing page operates just we need to make it for books.expert. All right. And <clears throat> I just also want to say that uh, if we jump into 
let's go into let's grab our code books.expert and I think we had code saved yet from yesterday here so there it is and I'm just gonna grab this and put that there please make the books.expert landing page in HTML full CSS and any JavaScript included I love the spinning cube Books.expert is going to be an all-in-one accounting enterprise platform. It will allow users to connect their Stripe account, invoice, and create customers via CRM on Stripe, connect their bank account securely, using Plaid to accounting and any any other business operational activities all from the web app right um, cool so let's see while that's doing that I'm gonna go ahead and jump back into my visual studio I'm gonna add an index.html and that's going to add an index.html file, which this is our, this is where we can start storing the code here. So watch this. This is going to be fun. And while that's loading there, I'm going to log into my Squarespace account because now we want to go ahead and log in here. I think we'll continue with Google. I've got one under Clever Partners that I think has all of my domains. And we'll go to, uh, I think it's under domains. Books.expert, there it is. We'll go into DNS settings. All right. Because now we need to register the uh, Well, let's just go ahead and copy that code in so and press control C to save it. And we need to now go into a new incognito window and we're going to try this out. We're going to try to go to our website now. Copy the IP address, go here. And let's see if it loads. Oh my gosh, it loaded up. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I love this cube. Oh, that cube is so awesome. Oh, this is so cool. Oh my gosh. I am ecstatic. Oh, and we even get this down button here. Oh, that's awesome. All right. All right. Books.expert is live and up and running. Okay, so let's go back to uh, ChatGPT and say that is working amazingly. Uh, we'll just let them know that. We'll go back to our other AI and we'll say, working amazingly. The uh, IP address can now go to the home page. And now we need to take our Squarespace domain of books.expert and point it to that IP address. For the droplets. Let's walk me through what records I need for my DNS settings. And we'll jump back into Squarespace. And you're going to need to know what our uh, records are going to need to be here. So, um, all right, this is going to be fun. We need an A record pointed to our IP. So we'll go back here. I'm going to delete our defaults. By the way, if you have GoDaddy, it's horrible to work with DNS records. You have to like put in tickets with support. I recommend working with Squarespace. Squarespace is so easy to use. 
All right, the host is going to be uh, just an at symbol, and this is going to be an A record. And there's our IP address. Boom. And then we're going to do a www A record here as well. So that way you can do both um, www or just dot, or just at the uh, at that domain. Sometimes this does take up to 48 hours to propagate. I have noticed that, man, working with DigitalOcean, this thing can propagate in a matter of, like, minutes. Um, so we've got those two added there. Now, what we want to do is we want to see if... Let's go ahead and now we want to... Now we want to uh, create the HTTPS for Digital ocean on the droplet while coming through registering it for the cert bot I think it is called cert bot and we want to do that through digital ocean droplet I have already uh, added the DNS records pointing it to my IP address, E4. All right. All right, sudo apt update. Let's go back here. Sudo apt update. All right, perfect. Sudo apt install. Cert bot. Python 3 dash certbot dash index. Yes, we want to go ahead and continue. All right, perfect. So, um, I don't want to do a firewall, so we'll skip that. And we're now we're going to obtain a certbot uh, certificate here. Dash dash index dash d books dot expert and we'll also do dash d www dot books dot expert right boom let's see if it works we're going to use my email address we're going to go ahead and do yes we agree with the terms of service yes we'll be willing to Account registered requesting certificate. Cross my fingers, deploying certificate. All right. Now we're not going to donate anything. Oh my gosh. Books.expert is live. HTTPS. Books.expert. Oh yeah live and that's it i hope this was 15 minutes long oh i love this this is so cool let's do it again my name's jordan i don't even know if sign up does anything nope features flexible plans automated invoicing integrations pricing this is so cool. Look, look at how I bet this works great on a smartphone. I bet you can click on it too. Nope, not draggable yet, but we'll we'll work on that. So cool. All right, that's video three. Hope you like it. And uh, next video, we're going to um, we're going to actually start connecting OA off uh, to our platform. So looking forward to. Uh, having you uh, watch uh, video four. All right, subscribe and uh, follow me with buildingbooks.expert. Okay, so what I just showed you is the exact reason why you should get off of Squarespace. Squarespace, GoDaddy, all of these, even Bubble, low-code platforms and tools, um, with AI, what we can do is we can actually just take the code that's 
created from AI, whether you decide to use Cursor or Claude or ChatGPT, you can take the AI code and then just add it to your own server on, on DigitalOcean. ChatGPT or any of the AIs are gonna walk you through how to set up the server. Um, and it's gonna be a server that you can use for almost anything that you want in the future. You're very limited in scope when you're using tools like Squarespace uh, or GoDaddy because those tools are not designed to be web applications. Web applications that have uh, uh, toolkits that are gonna allow you to build out your own chat rooms. Uh, toolkits to allow you to uh, build payment gateways that are customizable. Because yeah, sure, you can add a payment gateway on your Shopify site, but you're limited in scope to actually business processes when you want to use that payment gateway to actually create a workflow um, without having to resort to uh, other types of low-code tools. So from an automation perspective, and if you were building your own business from scratch, you want to use DigitalOcean, and this video shows you how easy it is uh, to do that in like 20 minutes. As you just saw, we went to CertBot, and we have an HTTPS protocol now. We uh, registered our DNS settings to point to DigitalOcean on our server, and we were able to connect VS Code to it, so you don't have to use Code Beautify anymore. Now you can actually use your website uh, in an agile manner with AI. So all I'm saying is, is that these companies that are offering you low-code solutions and tools, it may not be where we're going to be in 10 years from now. Um, so uh, I'm going to keep building, and in the next video we're going to walk you through uh, uh, how to integrate Plaid as well as Stripe uh, from an OAuth perspective on your web application. And uh, it's a pretty long video, so there's going to be some, some, uh, uh, some areas that are going to seem boring and drawn out. But in the end, uh, I was able to successfully get Stripe and Plaid uh, integrated to our web application, really just under a matter of like an hour and a half. So um, feel free to reach out. Uh, you can catch me on my website or email address. Um, that's the best way to get a hold of me. And uh, looking forward to walking you through connecting your Stripe platform, uh, your Plaid platform, and um, showing you the next step in how we're going to evolve this uh, books.expert web application.